position, his second of his career. Doohan, well, he's been on the pole this year five times. Checker had another, and of course, Crafar had that magical one in Donington Park. It's a very tight first corner. Goes on and on forever. The first couple of races that we've had today have been relatively clean around that first corner, but you never know what might happen later on in the race as uh, passing maneuvers are trying to be made, because this front straight, it is straight, but it's not straight for very long, because out of that last corner and into the first one on a Honda V4, which are achieving the quickest straight line speeds down the front straight, you really are steaming in there at about 155 mile an hour. Fabio Carpani on the Team Polini Honda brings up the rear of the grid in 21st position, just behind Fernando Cristobal, Garcia and Matt Waite in 18th position. Well, just bumping these machines off now as they get ready to start this warm-up lap. Huge crowd here, 65,000 at least. And you see the uh, windmills in the background, the wind farm here. And uh, we've got a little bit of wind blowing down the start-finish line. It'll push these bikes along slightly as the German crowd does the wave. Mm, not very well. They haven't practiced it very much. No, well, they didn't get to the final, did they? <laughs> right then, there's Max Biaggi. But let's have a recap on these World Championship points. Duan is seven ahead of Max. And and Max is two points ahead of Alex Crivier. Check up. He's out of the championship. Crafar looming locally in that fifth position. Long way to go in the championship yet. Well, this is a very hard race to predict. Max Biaggi hasn't been on the pole, hasn't won a race since the opener in Japan, and he knows that a win here from the pole would really revitalize his slightly fading championship hopes. And we should remember that while Duan has been winning races over the last four years in 500, Max Biaggi has been doing exactly the same thing in 250. Well, Toby, at Harama, we said the start and getting clean through turn one would be vital should be even more so here on that front row we have Biaggi of course on the pole position alongside him Kenny Roberts jr. on the three-cylinder Medanus a bike that usually gets away well and then third on the grid four-time world champion Michael Doohan who knows that a bad start here could make this a very very long afternoon in the office and down the inside Laconi making his first ever front row start but there are some very fast men on that second row Randy Mamola the second row yeah we've got two weeks ago the winner of the British Grand Prix Simon Crafer who's uh, doing a wonderful job so far here at the Saxon Ring alongside him Alexander Barros who still we're waiting to see if he can get up on the rostrum he's earning eighth in the world championship points right now Alex Crivier two-time winner of so far this season uh, in the Grand Prix season doing a wonderful job also looking for her to get up onto that podium but the whole shot specialist on the outside of the back grid on the second row is uh, Norafumi Abe this kid's just wonderful from the second row. Uh, you know, it's going to be very important to get a whole shot. I I'm going to put my money on him. Well, this is a twisty, tight racetrack, and there are really no straightaways, few opportunities to pass. In some ways, if I used a dirt track analogy, you'd say if Mugello is like the Springfield Mile, then this has got to be like some kind of a, a pea gravel half mile off in the Midwest, a place where the guy who gets the whole shot can really pull away unless somebody bumps him off the group. Mick Dewan knows that a good start here is as vital as it would be as it would have been in Harama. He also knows that sitting right behind him, he's got Alex Crivier and just off to his right, as Randy called him, the whole shot artist Abe. Hang on to your seats, folks. The main event is coming right up. Everybody there. There is Max Biaggi, furthest away from us. Kenny Jr. on the front row again. It's a triple. But then you've got Fours alongside you. Simon Crafar heads off the second row. The winner from Donington Park. Max Biaggi, he's got to do it now or never into that first corner. Doohan said yesterday, whoever leads into the first corner has got a 90% chance of winning the race. Got to run very quickly. Look, only nowhere. He's lost it. So then it's going to be Doohan. He's going to lead in the first corner. And then it's going to be Kenny Jr. Junior, but Barros Here's up Barros up the inside, oh. but Duan gets the good start when he has to. And Junior's still on the inside. He could get through Barros. No, he doesn't. So then it's Duan from Biaggi, from Barros, and Craver up in fourth position as they stream through. Junior is down to fifth place. Well, Mick Duan is a guy that he knows there are certain racetracks where you really have to get on the line. Notoriously, he's kind of a mediocre starter, but at this place and at Assen, another racetrack where you have to get a good start. Look what he's done here. He's gotten done exactly what he needs.
needs to do. He's cleared off, pulled out a few bike links, at least some breathing room on this hectic first lap. Look at Laconi come up, rather, uh, uh, Crafer come up on the outside there and have a look at, uh, at Biaggi. Max, Max Biaggi, he's holding them up. Look at the queue behind them. He took a defensive line down the hill. Crafer's up into third position. Uh, his junior is up into fourth position. They've got past Barros, who's gone backwards. It is Sete Jibba now who's behind Barros, not Alex Crivier, who I thought it might have been earlier on. Crivier, there he is, number four. There's Arbe, he's fluffed it. There is number eight, et al. Down the back straight. doonan has got a lead of about three quarters of a second as they steam down, building up speed to 140 mile an hour. Crafer, he's keen to get past Biaggi quick. Crafer, a good start from the second row. Here's Barros, Barros on the brakes, looking up the inside of Kenny Roberts oh, no. Jr. Let's see if he's done it. He, oh, and back under goes Roberts. It looked like Barros was in front there just for a second, but Roberts took it right back. He knows that if he gets stuck behind Barros on that four-cylinder bike, it's going to be a long afternoon. Takes his hand off the bar there. It's Barros right. comes back by again. That's sheer horsepower along this straight. Do it up front. He's out on his own there for a while, away from the hectic pack that's following him. Biaggi trying to pick up the pace. Copyrosi, rather, <laughs> Copyrosi, rather, Crafer right behind him. And then as Alex Barros who's gotten a little bit farther up the road in front of Kenny Roberts Jr. Crafer takes an interesting line like we've seen in previous races today around that right-hander. Up the hill, you can hear that distinctive note of the 180-degree screamer of Doohan. He's got a lead of just over seven tenths of a second ahead of Max Biaggi. Biaggi, well, there's nothing against the, in the rule book to say that you can't take different lines, but the traffic jam behind Max Biaggi in the first part of that lap was unbelievable at this point on the track. They're halfway around lap two, and Doohan is extending the lead. Okay, his lead was 0.7. We've got to wait until we pass the timing click on the start-finish line before we can log Max Biaggi's progress, and I think Dennis yes. is closing in. Yes, he is. I, I can see that. Uh, one thing I did, don't think that we saw in the opening, here's the start of the race where Alex Barrow keeps, watch Kenny Jr., keep your eye on Kenny Jr., almost runs into the back of Barrow's right, right there. He goes on the inside of him. Tried to. Uh, one thing that we didn't see on the television screen is when Max might have made a mistake going into that low gear corner the first lap. That's what held everybody up and let Mick get a little bit of a gap open. But as you can see, he's clawing, clawing back on Mick's lead. Well, they come across a start-finish line here for the first time, doing as a seven-tenth of a second lead. The fastest man on the racetrack is Alex Barros as they come past now. Doing in the lead from Biaggi, Crafer, and third. Barros. He's third. And there's Barros up into third. Well, he is the fastest man on the racetrack, at least on that lap. And Barros on a mission, moving up now into third place and trying to close on uh, Max Biaggi. The fireworks going off. Blurkert, Barros, third place. Okay, fifth is still number 10, Junior. Sixth, Gibbonau. Seventh, Laconi. Eighth, Arbe, who from eighth on the grid is still eighth. Crivier's gone backwards to ninth. Van der Gerberg is still tenth. Ralph Fordman, eleventh et al. Right then, it's the maestro. That's what some of them call him. It's, it's Michael Doohan who has got that lead. But this is hammer and tongs in the early part of this race. He's still got a three-quarter of a second lead. Well, Mick Doohan said he didn't like this racetrack. He didn't say he couldn't race on it. This is the kind of racetrack that may, ironically, just favor the talents that he has. One, physically, he's very strong. Two, he can slide a bike with the best of them. And on this kind of a racetrack, 31 laps, hot conditions. Toward the end of the day, it's going to be the man who can control a sliding bike on worn-out tires who has the advantage. Down the back they go, building up speed to 140, maybe 145 miles an hour. Barros is close. He can smell something here, and it's called a podium. Likewise, so can Max Biaggi. And look how close they are. The gap between Duan and Biaggi last time was 0.72. It is now 0.29. And Barros again is the quickest again, guy. Again, Barros the fastest. He does a 28.3. And he could have gone second, Dennis. I think he could have gone second. straight. He was looking in there, wasn't he? No, he didn't make it. Mick Duan leads from Biaggi. There there's Barros, there's Crawford, Kenny Roberts Jr. holding off his old teammate from the Spanish Championship, Sete Gibernau. Those two guys rode 250s together for a couple of years in the Spanish Ducados Championship. They train on dirt bikes together all the time. Alex Barros in third place. He's clicked off the fastest lap on each of the last two laps. We're on board with Max Biaggi coming through the s slow uh, section of the track. Now they begin to find their legs, relatively speaking, here at the Saxon ring. Over those bumps, look at that suspension, chucking Kenny Jr. around. But 
the leading three are still ahead of Crafer, who's in a little bit of no man's land at the moment on his Red Bull Yamaha. Junior is in fifth place. Jebenau sixth. Arbe has popped off Laconi for seventh place, so Laconi's back in eighth. Well, from the very beginning, we've seen Barros very aggressive on this racetrack, and he's going to be looking for the slightest opportunity to get past Biaggi on the brakes. If anybody can do it on the brakes, it would be Alex Barros. Down the hill they come. Crayfast closing in as well. He was one second behind Barros, and it's easily just a couple of tenths now. Look at them. They're all circulating as four. Okay, we are just about to start lap four of 31 here as they come over the line. We're on board with Biaggi, but does Barros take a move up on the inside? He's oh, up there, and he's going to go through. Barros on brakes. Barros on the brakes in front of Biaggi. Oh, and that thick. was close, oh. and he did make it past. Now, Barros up into second place, and he sets out after Mick Dewan. Well, Barros, he had a torrid start to this weekend because he was down in about 13th position after Friday afternoon first qualifying. He then came up to 6th position yesterday afternoon, and Crafer almost takes out Biaggi. Oh, sorry. Stay there, but Crafer... <laughs> So then we're on board with Max Biaggi. It's drama and action, and we're only on lap five of 31. It's Barros who's up the ante. Barros can smell something. I said he can smell a podium. He can smell a win here. OK, remember that they are all on Michelin's in the first three places, but not Crafer, who's on Dunlop's in fourth place. Michelin report. Well, Mick Dewan has gone for a hard front and a soft rear. Biaggi on a medium front and a soft rear. Crivier on a medium front. The same combination as Biaggi and soft rear, but let's quickly check Barros. Barros has gone for a medium front and he's got a harder rear, a medium hard rear. The only thing that I keeps me uh, thinking he's got, is... He's, he's Barros goes up the inside, goes in front of Mick Dewan. Did he run wide? Will Dewan come back? No. Barros, the most aggressive guy on the racetrack so far today, goes into the lead. How long can he make those tires last? And Crafar's up there as well as they charge over the line at the beginning of lap six. Crafar is going to hold position in fourth and place. Here's Biaggi play. coming past Dewan on the inside as well. He's not going to make it this time, I don't think. No, Dewan able to hold him off. But Mick now coming under all kinds of pressure from Biaggi, and it is... Crafer back there also. Kenny Roberts Jr. not completely out of it, Look hanging it. on back there in fifth place. Randy Mamola. Yeah, fifth, sixth, and seventh were faster, running faster times than the top guys right now. Kenny Roberts Jr. bringing Abby up with him to the back of this group right now. Well, let's see what kind of a pace Barros can do when he's up front on his own. Normally, people who pass Mick do it tend not to go as quickly as Mick was going before they passed him. This is a different kind of a racetrack. This is all left, right, on the brakes, hectic stuff, and this may suit Barros. Up the hill they come. We're aboard with the four-time world champion Duan leaning it over in that smooth style. This is Arbe's out of the race. He's binned it again. He's gone into the gravel. The man eating gravel will eat bikes for breakfast, lunch, and tea. And Arbe is out of the race. That's at the same place he fell yesterday. Twice he fell yesterday. That is the left-hander behind the pits. He can't get that corner right. He Once he went underneath, once he went over the top yesterday, he is out in the gravel. He was in seventh position. He's out of the race, but he's okay. Kenny, Look Ro at Kenny this. Roberts Jr. is Closing up on this group, Roberts is actually, he did a 28-7 on the last lap quicker than any of these first four guys who are all lapping in 29. So Roberts right on the back of this lead group. We got two Dunlop runners in the top five as opposed to three Michelin runners. And by the way, the two Dunlop runners of Crafar and Junior are all running on essentially the same front and rear compound tires. We're on board with Barros, and does Duan go through? No, he doesn't. That would be a brave manoeuvre through there, because it's a second gear series of bends. He's rolling it on and off, almost idle mode, hardly high revs, but it's, he's keeping him behind, and Barros, he's aggressive, and he needs to be aggressive at this track, and it's working well for him. So far, Alex Barros is a guy who has a reputation of being very hard to pass. Usually the scenario is that Barros gets out in front early in a race, and then people say they're being held up by him. Well, in fact, they are often being held up. He admits it himself, but in this race, he's come from the back, past everyone, gone into the lead, and how do you pass Alex Barros? Well, on the brakes, it's very difficult. Max Biaggi closing up on Mick Dewan. Junior must have made a mistake or something because he's lost bucket loads of time. He probably, went, he probably went down the straight. <laughs> 
you cynic Dennis. They're trying harder than have a new bike. We're on board with doing as it goes through. No, it doesn't. Listen to those revs rise as he cranks it over to the left hand side. We're of course riding with Barros, who takes a tighter line and slows everybody right up through the left hander. We come round to complete lap seven of 31. Through the flip flop, last series of corners onto the front straight. Over the crest of the hill we come. The gap between Barros and Duan is 0.17 of a second, and that is the way it's going to stay. It's still from the top. Barros from Duan in second, Biaggi third, Crafar fourth, Junior in fifth position, Sete Jibba now in sixth, just ahead of his friend Alex Crivier, Laconi in eighth. Duan, does he make it stick? He does. Duan now leads as we uh, come through the first part of lap eight here. That was a brave manoeuvre as he sticks it up, and I don't think Barros was even expecting that I, there. I think that pace was getting a little bit slow for Mick as everyone was bunching up behind him. They were all doing 29s from first down to 10th place, so Mick doing back into the lead now, and I think we'll see Mick get into the 28s as he tries to speed this race up. Everyone was closing up on the back of him there. A little bit too close for comfort, I think, for Mick, and you know, with that kind of traffic, anything can happen. Anybody can make a mistake and, and bump one another. We'll have to keep an eye on our screens to see how fast the pace gets going right now. Yeah, you'd reckon we're going to see some 28s here from Mick as he uh, as he got past Barros now. Barros is uh, still in front of Biaggi, then Crafer and Kenny Roberts Jr. hanging on to the back. He accordions, yo-yos back and forth on this group. On the straighter sections of the track, he does tend to get dropped a little bit, closes back up on them, not just on the brakes, but through the corners. Carries real good cornering speed on that Medinas. Barros again, very close to doing through this section. They're not spreading out across the start-finish line now, and Duan has done a 28-9. Yes, he is the only guy in the 28s. Barros 29-3, everyone else in 29s, and it goes 29 right on down to 10th place. Here is Alex Crivier. He's in six as he was in sixth position. We come back, though, with Duan. One, two, three, four, five. It's as quick as that. The gap covering the top five is 1.2 seconds. It's that close. Five riders, 1.2 seconds. So this is Donington completely turned on its head because Crayfar won by 11 seconds or so. OK, there you see the field further back. We're riding aboard with Duan. Short shifting, you can hear, you can see the quick flicker of the orange rim of his Repsol Honda on the right, bottom right-hand side of his screen as he charges down the hill, and it's working. He's pulling ahead of second-place man, Brazilian Barros. Halfway around lap 9 of 31 as they come through the chicane, down onto the back section behind the paddock. Building up speed to 4th to 5th gear, 140 miles an hour. Simon Crafar running on Dunlops, number 11 in 4th position, but is Biaggi looking menacing now? I think he is. He's going to go through into 2nd place. Does Barros know he's there? He does, but Biaggi goes deep, picks the bike Whoa, up. Oh, Barros back on the inside. Yes, you're right. Barros, Biaggi ran just a little bit deep, and you don't have to issue a, an engraved invitation to Alex Bottles, you leave a hole and he goes through it. So Bottles hanging on to second place, but that's working to Mick Dewan's benefit because he sees oh. pulling away from these guys. Biaggi sees Dewan going off into the distance. He's desperate to try and get he's past it. Now he's lost a place. His desperation produced a mistake, and that's allowed Simon Crafer to go through up into third. And now Max Biaggi coming under the uh, gun sights of Kenny Roberts Jr. on the Medinas. No rocket launchers on the bike like they had last year. You just can't see him. You just can't see him. That's all. Oh, look at. Crafar, he's all over the back of Barros like a bad suit as he comes up to the tight left hand. You're not going to go through there, Crafar. Meanwhile, there is Alex Crivier in sixth there position and almost another race away. Crafar is starting to look confident on that bike, the way he's throwing it around. But, of course, whilst they're battling for second position, it gives a chance for Duan to get past. Is Crafar going to go through there? He's hard on the brakes. You saw it squirreling around a little as he comes up the hill, but Biaggi is still there to take away anything uh, from Crafar. Getting past Alex Barros on the brakes is like trying to slip a sunset pass a rooster or a sunrise for that matter or anything to do with lights because Barros doesn't like to see wheels alongside but Crafer looking really aggressive Biaggi who made a mistake and lost ground he's right back there again and Kenny Roberts Jr. he'd like to have about five or six more horsepower because he is definitely on the pace. Duan must think it's his birthday with these guys battling it out for second position but Crafer he needs to keep his cool and he's got bags of it likewise Max Biaggi Latin temperament Latin temper from a yes, cool head, yes as well. The first five are now split by 1.9 seconds. Biaggi goes over to third position again at the first corner. He gets his 
breaking. No, he doesn't. Oh, again, he, again, he goes too deep in there. He's desperate to try and get by, and desperation keeps producing mistakes on this tight little racetrack. We're ra passing on the brakes. There's so few opportunities to do it. Now he's got to do it all over again. Greyfire looks up on the inside. A bounce is off the track. Who, who keeps it on the track? No, he loses it. He completely loses it. So Barris goes from second to fourth. Greyfire goes from third to second. And Biaggi is now up into third position. Got that good. Doing is still in the lead, but he's had his lead nearly doubled by these guys playing around. Okay, we've been waiting to see what would happen if Crayford could get some clear road in front of him because he looks like he's able to go very quickly on that bike. He looks confident. He's obviously been boxed. Well, we're not going to have to wait very long to see because lap times, maybe not on this lap, which is the lap he had to actually make the passing maneuver, but on the next lap, we'll be able to see if once he's got some clear road in front of him, providing Max Biaggi doesn't shove it up the inside of the next corner, we'll see if Crayford can reel Doohan in. Otherwise, Doohan's showing signs of disappearing here into the distance. The other guy that's catching up right now is Alex Crivier, who's in sixth place. You don't really see it, but he's uh, gained nearly a half a second that lap on Kenny Roberts Jr. Crivier's done a 129-1. You're absolutely right, Randy. He's taken four-tenths of a second from Kenny Roberts Jr. He's closing on that group. Nick Doohan still doing 28s. And uh, Crayford did a 28 as well, a 28-9. We'll see on the next lap, which will be the first lap that Crayford has actually had clear road in front of him during the entire lap if he is able to match Doohan's pace. Biagi's third, Bottas fourth, Roberts, then Crivier, who is also doing 28s and continuing to close on Roberts. Cynthia Gibber now also doing 20 and so is Laconi back there in 6th, 7th and 8th. Up the hill we come, past the position where we lost Norik Abe out of the race just a few moments ago. He is the only rider to uh, to retire out of this manic German Grand Prix so far. Look how close it is, back to eighth position, just five seconds from Doohan to Laconi. Waldman a lonely ninth, Van der Gerberg still holds station in tenth, Nanba soldiering on in eleventh position, but Gary McCoy is just behind him. Nobuoyoki thirteenth, Garcia fourteenth, and Eskil Suter getting the line. Points. The movie star Honda. Where's Crayfar? Oh, Where's Crayfar? He's back. Where is he? Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Where is he? He's out of the race. Simon Crayfar off his Red Bull Yamaha falls out of second position. He's in the gravel. The tall Kiwi looks to be okay. I don't quite know where that is. We are riding on board with him. Yes. Yes, we're on board with Crayfar here. Up the hill. And he is into the gravel and down. And that is a, uh, a roller coaster ride. So then, it's now an open road for Max Biaggi. Dear, oh dear, Crayfar won, wins the last Grand Prix, and he bins it this race, obviously trying hard. He had a first lap that he had clear on his own, but that is his day's work at the office done and dusted. So then, with that now means that Dune is still in the lead, but his lead is not 1.2, it's now 2.6. You can see that group led by Alex Crivier with Gibernau and Laconi behind in fifth season. 6th and 7th, it's doing starting really to, if, if Biaggi can't do something about it on this next couple of laps, it's going to be similar to what we saw from Crafer in Donington Park when you just start to take 2, 3 tenths of a second on every lap and pull away. Doohan, remember, has chosen to go to a hard front tire. He's the only guy out there using a hard front Michelin. He had trouble with front tires in practice yesterday when he went down twice, so he's chosen to go to a hard combination today. The track temperatures, much warmer than they were yesterday. Biaggi, who comes through here, has gone to a medium front. Well, so is everyone else among the, among the top runners on Michelin's. Track temperature, 32, now 33 degrees Celsius, the warmest easily that we've had it all weekend. So, of course, the riders after practice that they, that they have at... Uh two o'clock to three o'clock local time. They are now racing at about 20 past two local time here in Germany. So they're racing at the same sort of time of the day, although the weather conditions are a lot warmer. There though, it's fourth position, Junior, over the line. And Biaggi is still at the head of that pack. Number six, then number nine, Barros, then number 10, Junior. Then there's Laconi, you can see him coming through. He is now the only Red Bull Yamaha because we've lost Crayfar. Duan's lead is extended by another half a second. It's now 2.7 seconds, you see it visually on screen, we're on lap 14. <laughs> 
live the 500 race at the East Ger at the German Grand Prix here at the Saxon Ring. Mick Dewan has extended that lead to 2.7 seconds from Max Biaggi and Alex Bottas. You see them there together. Kenny Roberts Jr. dropping back from them, and he's about to be absorbed by Alex Crivier, who's being followed by his teammate Sete Gibernau. Right on back here to Ralph Waldman, who's in eighth place. Waldman behind Laconi and eighth and in front of the first of the twins. Well, not the first of the twins, but the first of the private twins. Van der Gerberg doing has just been with the regularity of a watch, clicking off 28s one after another. He's done it again. Doing's done a 28-5. Biaggi has no answer for that. The only other rider on the racetrack right now who is running under 129 is Alex Crivier, who's closing, closing, closing in on Kenny Roberts Jr. in the Medinas for fourth place. Alex Crivier, just three tenths of a second back of Kenny Jr. This, though, is second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth. There you see uh, Alex Crivier now. He's made contact. He's all over the back of Kenny Roberts Jr. Very frustrating for, for uh, Jr. because he's been riding so well on this racetrack, but still a little deficiency in horsepower on this track, even though there's no straightaway, does make a difference. Up the hill they come, into the blind left hander past the bollards that they use as a reference point. The bike goes light just a little. Over the chicane they come, down the back section. There is what three and a half seconds looks like, and Biaggi's going to have to up the ante, but Alex Crivier's going through. Alex Crivier could be on the podium here if he keeps going like this, yeah, because we're just coming up to the halfway point. It's going to be difficult to get around uh, Junior on the Medinas here, unless he can get alongside of him along the home straight, perhaps because uh, Robert's gonna be carrying good corner speed through all sections of this racetrack. Well, this really is the first time that we've seen the Medanus versus a Ford versus a Honda Twin This is where it could together. happen at the end of this straight. This Got is him. where it could happen. Horsepower pulls out, passes. The Twin doesn't. Junior dropped back a place now. Now he's got uh, Sethi Gibernau to deal with. Gibernau desperate to try and get oh. through, but Junior's not gonna give that place away easily. through the second gear section. There is Kenny Senior on pit wall, seeing his lad in fourth position. Up the hill they come, Crivier's got through. Look at the lead that Crivier's got now ahead of Junior as they come up behind the pits. Past the place where we saw Arbe go out of the race. Down the hill they go, building up speed. Second, third, fourth gear. Wheelies does Junior. Now look, Junior's closing in on Crivier through this section, but of course, as you say, Dennis, it's down, that, down the back and the front section that uh, number four just disappears. Normally what happens at uh, your ordinary Grand Prix track is that the distance that Crivier would pull over uh, the twins and the triples would increase by a lot, but here there's not enough, almost enough for Kenny Roberts Jr. and for said to Jimmy now to close back up on Alex Crivier. Now we've got a horsepower battle between a twin and a triple, but of course there's only two of these triples, number 10 and Voldman, number 28, of course. We're looking forward to Kenny Jr. on the Medanus, built out of the UK by King Kenny himself and all of his team. Some of the team are not here this weekend because they've already gone over to the States, already preparing the next Evolution model that should be appearing at the Checo Grand Prix on August 23rd. Keeps it on the Island. Good job there, Kenny Jr. Down the hill he goes. Well, Alex Crivier is on a mission. He's done a 128.9. The only rider on the track going faster is this man, Mick Dewan, who continues to click off those very regular 128.8s as Dewan now has extended his lead to 3.8 seconds. Biaggi still holding off Alex Barros. Both of those guys going in 29s. There are 14 laps to go, and Alex Crivier could could potentially get up there and get into a battle for second place with these two. Barros holding station there behind Biaggi, who just, they seem to be set in stone, these two, seem to be set the same distance apart for the last couple of laps. That distance is half a second. Crivier then in fourth position. Junior fifth. Sete Gibernau sixth. Gibernau's right on the pipes. Gives it a huge handful. Shakes its head under acceleration. Down the hill they go. Just keeping it off just a little. And then quick jab of power before being on the brakes, braking at the 200 meter 
board almost touches the camera makes it look closer probably than it really is actually as they come through that slow section we've seen people off the track there running out of brakes before today in previous races and already they're over the line again yeah friendly rivalry between these two Cynthia Gibernau and Kenny Roberts Jr. as we said they rode together in Spain on on the uh, Marlboro 250 team that Kenny Roberts ran in the Spanish Ducados Open Championship they also trained together on dirt bikes this is the first time they've actually hooked up on the racetrack in, a, in the battle of the twin and the triple. Max Biaggi pulling away a little bit. He was so desperate early in the race to get past Vados and to get past Crafer that he really cost himself the chance to uh, to make the split with Mick when Mick went. Randy Mamola. Yeah, I'm in the Red Bull Yamaha uh, Simon Crafer. Simon, you started in, from fifth position. You got it up to second and you started to do one minute 28. What happened? Um, oh, we were having a little scuffle between like Barros and myself and uh, Biaggi, and it felt like Barros came through like going pretty well in the beginning, but then he did his normal trick and started slowing off a bit, and that I felt that that was held, holding Biaggi in the get through and Mick was doing the same speed I felt like I could keep doing it but I obviously couldn't the front gave me a few warnings and it has done right through practice and then I, I, I just didn't listen and kept going the same speed and it tucked on me so it's good to see that you're okay thanks for talking with us thank you Randy Simon Crafer who won the Donington race Meanwhile, Doohan is in charge of this one. He, however, is just rolled off just a little because Biaggi has taken. There is Simon Crafer. We just spoke to him a second ago. However, uh, Max Biaggi has reduced Doohan's lead from 3.8 to now 3.5 exactly. So it's a little, but I don't think it's going to be enough. 12 laps to go. This is the battle for fifth and sixth position still. It's still the supreme power. It's like the, the, the triple is the halfway house between a four and a twin, obviously. It's a halfway house in exactly uh, cylinders, and of course in weight with its minimum weight limit. But of course, they're not running at 115 kilograms minimum no, weight. They've got a little bit more. Yeah, that triple is a lot closer in its weight to a, uh, to a full four-cylinder 500 than it is to the minimum weight. I think they're up around uh, 126, 127 kilograms. Kilos. The twin from Jibber now, that's 97 spec. That should be pretty close to that 100 kilo minimum. Absolutely. I, I think it is, actually, Dennis. And uh, going back to the 97 spec, like Takumari Oki Road last year, the 98 one didn't really uh, produce the goods. So they've gone back to what they know and what goes well. Aoki, of course, on the podium numerous times last year. Ooh. That's a position where you can do it, but you've got to be brave. Now, Robert's going to be a hard man to pass around here. He's, he's carrying as, as high a corner speed as anyone on the racetrack, I think. But uh, Sete, who was able to go with Alex earlier, got separated from him. Sete looking along the side on the, on the home straight as they come, but there's no speed advantage there for the twin. Well, this is the tight battle for fourth and fifth place between Crevier and Robert, rather, between Roberts and Gibernau. We're on board with Sete Gibernau coming down the hill right up the three tail pipes of Kenny Roberts Jr. Listen to how low the revs almost die uh, as the rear spins up on Mick Doohan's machine as he charges down the hill, 135 mile an hour, down the bottom of section, underneath the bridge. And Max Biaggi, well, he lost a tenth of a second to Mick Doohan, but Biaggi has upped the ante. He's doing similar-ish lap times to Doohan. Barros, he's about half a second slower than Biaggi in lap times at least. Yeah, we'll repeat one more time that uh, Doohan runs on a soft rear, the same as Biaggi, but uh, Biaggi has a medium front, and Doohan the only rider on a Honda V4 who chose to go to a hard front tire. Through the chicane they come. There is Junior, the flat note of a triple and a flatter note of a twin. Laconi is behind them, but uh, he could be up with these two, Dennis, with 11 laps to go, because he's taken about 0.6 of a second a lap out of them. You're absolutely right. With 11 laps to go, Laconi lapped, yes, he lapped six tenths of a second quicker on that last lap. So Sete can't find a way around Kenny Roberts Jr., and that's allowing Laconi to close up on both of them. Over the line they come. Laco 
No, Gibbonow stays where he is. Laconi is closing that gap bit by bit. No problem for Michael Doohan, though. He is still extending his lead just little bit by little bit, but with a 3.73 second lead, that'll do. He, you know, he's in control. He's got his finger on the pulse. He's all in command, and that is what's won him four world championships. The only thing Max Biaggi can do is, is go as hard as he can. If he could start taking a tenth, two tenths of a second away from doing, Mick would see it on his board. That would at least keep the pressure on. 3.7 seconds. It's not the 12.5 seconds that Prefer had over doing in Donington Park, but it still looks like a lot of racetrack between these two, particularly on a racetrack like this. A win is a win. <laughs> a win is a win is a win. Yeah, that's right. I know one thing that Mick was complaining about a lot was the fact that the front tire, not a lot of feel. So when you've got a lead and no one seems to be putting any pressure on you, why push it any harder than you really need to? Still doing 1 minute 28.8. That is very, very impressive. Get him onto the, uh, onto the second row of the grid in eighth position. Easily, that would. So then... Over the line he comes, he completes lap 22, plus 3.7 to Max Biaggi with nine laps to go. That's what it means. And there you have it on screen. Max Biaggi holding Michael Doohan in touch, or is actually Michael Doohan holding Max Biaggi in touch? I think it could well be that way round. With eight laps to go, Max Biaggi has put on a burst, a 28-7 on the last lap. That's managed to pull back a few tenths of a second over Mick Doohan as we see Alex Crivier make his move here up into third place. We knew that was coming because Crivier has been the fastest man on the racetrack for the last couple of laps. He moves up now into third place from Alex Barros. Doohan leading the race by 3.3 seconds over Max Biaggi. Barros was third. Now it's Alex Crivier. Meanwhile, in that battle for fifth and sixth, Sixth place, Seth Ejibar now has gotten past Kenny Roberts Jr. and Regis Laconi not very far away, about to bring Roberts under pressure as well. But we think that Laconi will have to wait just a second. We think that Laconi has passed Jr. for sixth. We'll have to just take stock with that one. On to the home straight, they come. Crivier number four now up into the point. 16 of them for third. So there he goes, lap, uh, seven laps to go. As we come back with Ralph Waldman and Jürgen van der Gerberg coming up the hill onto the front straight. Laconi's taken Junior. He has. He's up in a fifth position. He. There are now but three Gibernau, riders. Gibernau's obviously made a mistake because he's gone back behind both Laconi and Roberts. So with seven laps to go, Waldman, we're seeing him here in eighth place. Meanwhile, up front, Max Biaggi has taken another three-tenths of a second off Mick Dewan's lead, and it is now point three. It is now three, three dead, just three seconds that uh, Biaggi trails Dewan by with seven laps to go. So Biaggi doing all he can do, set the pace as quickly as he can, hope that Mick, when he sees those tenths of a second disappearing off his board, um, you know, might just make a mistake. Can Biaggi catch him? At three-tenths of a second per lap with seven laps to go, he cannot, not at that pace. There's the gap between the two. Max Biaggi giving it everything he has. Biaggi, a couple of mistakes early in the race when he was battling with Crafer and with Barros, cost him an opportunity to go with Mick. Now, as the race develops here, the final stages, Biaggi finding a way to go very quickly. Doing, he's got a big three-second uh, lead in hand, so he can administer that lead as he crosses the start-finish line. Now, with six laps to go. Doohan has answered. Yes, he has answered Biaggi. He's equaled that time. 28-6. Biaggi does a 28-6, so that lead frozen at three seconds. Well, we're now into the critical part of the race that Biaggi was predicting yesterday after qualifying, which was after 20 laps, and we're on lap 26 now, that the tyres are just going to be shot on the left-hand side. It's going to be difficult to hold them in check, but, of course, Duan is used to sheer, brutal, awesome power in a 500, and Biaggi is used to winning races and four world championships like Duan, but this is only his ninth Grand Prix meeting on a 500 machine. Well, the pace that the ride 
riders are on right now, and not a slow one at all. They're doing 28 sixes, the two leaders. That's about the same pace that uh, Harada, uh, it was the same as Harada's fastest lap in the 250 race. The actual fastest lap in this race was put up by Alex Bottles on lap three, a 28-3. Again, this is a racetrack where the advantage of a 500 over a 250 is minimal, to say the least, but nevertheless, much harder to ride a 500. That's the merit of, of the 500 class. Even though it's a small and twisty race class, racetrack, just because you go quicker on a 250 doesn't mean throwing a leg on a 500 would mean you'd be able to go out and win. It's always interesting, though, that the twins were theoretically devised for racetracks like this. The idea was that if a 250 was good, then a big twin would be better, a super 250, but that's never quite materialized. Doing across the start-finish line now with five laps to go, and Doing is taking it all back away from Biaggi. He pulled three-tenths of a second, so Mick looks like he's very much in control. Barros doesn't look as if he's got the measure of Alex Crivier here uh, to the tune of about a tenth of a second the lap. This is a battle for third and fourth. Fifth is still Regis Laconi, so the French are actually not doing too bad today. Well, something's, Junior. something's happened to Gibra now. He's disappeared now. It's uh, yep. Robert sixth, then it's Wallman on the second, Medinas in seventh, and Van der Gerberg eighth. So set to Gibra now, not appearing on our screen. Okay, well, the Medinas, six, Randy. Yeah, he just went down the start finish line and it sounded pretty sick. Uh, ninth Sente. place, yeah. Oh, uh, yes, lost. yeah, we do see him now in ninth place and he's lapped in 144. Yeah, 15 seconds sounded, slower. Yeah, sounded very flat. It's the super single then. Okay, <laughs> Jibber now down, down to ninth. So, Medinas in sixth and seventh position with Junior and Ralph Waldman. And the Medanis' best ever finish has been in eighth position, I believe, over the last 18 months since it started in Malaysia last year. Of course, they had bail riding for them last year and junior. Now, they opted for a completely different uh, chassis this year, and it's built, built, built. They've been working long, long hours in their workshop and at the tracks, getting everything ready. And although it's a works bike, of course, it's a Kenny Roberts-built machine. It's branded as a Medanis, but... The sponsorship not rolling in as it did last year for whatever reason. And as Barros's crew urge him on, King Kenny putting a bit of money in. So a works bike of Dern is in the lead and a rented machine of Max Biaggi. Biaggi has to work hard to find his own budget, of course. Still in second position, Crivier works bike third. Barros, another least v Honda V4 in fourth. Well, as we watch Mick doing here, it looks like he has things very much under control now from Max Biaggi. Yeah, I guess the, uh, I guess what I would add to what you were saying about the Medina's effort, I think the biggest problem that Kenny Roberts had is the devaluation of the ringgit because they've got so much sponsorship coming from Proton and from uh, Medina's out of uh, Malaysia. It isn't that the sponsorship was cut. It's just that the, uh, that the ringgit was uh, suffered from the uh, Asian flu and, uh, Chicken flu was, was devalued in relation to the dollar. So uh, yeah, they're they're going to be back, and they're going to have that three-cylinder, the new three-cylinder bike for the Czech Republic. Duan has extended that lead to 3.3 seconds. Crivier is third, then Baros, then Laconi, Roberts, Waldman, Van der Gerberg, Namba, and Aoki in tenth. Carrying on down that screen, I see that uh, Sete Jiber now is soldiering on, but he's dropping down toward the end of the points. In fact, he's in 15th place. Matt Waite, just out of the points, may pick up a point today if uh, Sete keeps going backward. We're on uh, looking at uh, now Koji Namba up in the ninth position with Nobuatsu Aoki in tenth place, number three. Namba, of course, he's back in the Grand Prix circus. Uh, he did four Grand Prix at the beginning of the year, had good qualifying in Japan and Malaysia, then lost it a little when he came to Europe and circuits that he didn't know, i.e. Jerez and Mugello. Nobu Aoki, lone Suzuki, almost similar to, of course, Abe at Donington Park, when Abe was only on one bike. Namba still standing in for Bale. The Bale saga goes on and on. I don't know when it's going to end, but they say that he's going to be back for Bruno, and that'll be a racetrack to come back with with a bang, because, of course, he put on the pole there in 96. He put on the front row last year on a Medanus, and that is a wide, booming racetrack. It's as wide as a runway. This, though, is doing... He is masterfully balancing a 3.3 second lead ahead of Biaggi. Biaggi still reeling off times pretty well comparable to the naked eye. 
to the Australian. There you have it. Confirmation 3.307. It was 3.376 the lap before. Doohan steaming onto the front straight. He's now just got two circulations to go. With two laps to go, Mick Doohan just, uh, just seven kilometers away from what would, would be his 50th Grand Prix victory. There, Max Biaggi in second, and now Alex Bottas still hanging on. Uh, as we've seen them also at Donington Park, these two together there, they were battling for fourth. Here they're battling for third. And uh, we did check that uh, Sete Gibra now continued to lose places, so he's obviously got trouble on that Repsol twin. He's dropped now behind Matt Waite, who moves up into 15th place. Down the hill they come, behind these lonely two, Crivier and Barros, we've got Laconi, and he's having a lonely race in uh, fifth position, then Junior, then Voldman. Well, Barros is going to put a move on Crivier here if he can. In the last couple of laps, Barros has closed back up. Uh, Alex, obviously going to be a hard man to pass. He's not going to want to give up that third place and podium position, but uh, Barros was three-tenths of a second quicker on the last lap. Doing on his own, leading here, going off into the distance. He's been able to control this race, the early part of the race. Uh, he was back and forth between first and third, but then once he made his move, Max Biaggi wanted so badly to go with him, but couldn't find a way past Alex Barros. Crafer, the same problem. Crafer, when he did finally get up into second place, uh, actually overcooked it. He was confident that he could go as quick as Mick, but uh, he couldn't. Doing leading from Biaggi, then Crivier, and we'll see if, as Mick comes across the line now, we've got one lap to go. We're on the last lap, and doing Toby, he's still running 28s. There's no end to his genius. Christoph Baal is one of the Shell Advanced riders. He's almost going to be lapped. There is Zete Jibber now. He has retired just with three and a half kilometers to go. So close and yet so far. But he was in 17th position out of the points. Things just went sick. Back though with Doohan though. He's just got about three quarters of a lap to go as he comes up the hill. A huge amount of fans here this afternoon to see the Australian champion on the Repsol Honda V4 charge down the hill. Listen to that thing scream. Building up speed to 135 miles an hour. You can hardly hear it over the sirens and the klaxons. Just half a lap to go. He has totally dominated this race. He predicted yesterday whoever led into the first corner, 90% chance of winning it. There was a bit of confusion on the first lap with Biaggi making a bit of a fluff and Doohan got out of the traps and went away. Yeah, Doohan did exactly what he had to do here today from this front row. He got a good start. He got up there early. Then he was in mix mixing it up a little bit with the other uh, V4s, but when he made his break, he made his break definitively, and he broke his rivals. They couldn't go with him. Uh, and even now, at this stage in the race, when everybody else has fallen back into the 29s, Mick still, even though he doesn't have to, still doing 28 nines, uh, and I think that it's, it's just... Uh, very much at ease as he comes across here on the rear wheel, his 50th Grand Prix win, his 50th victory, and he now extends his lead over Biaggi to 12 points as Biaggi comes through second. Third position is going to be a battle between Crivier and Paros, and Crivier does get it. So then, Alex Crivier does get third position ahead of Alex Paros by just over a tenth of a second. Fifth position for the French is going to be Regis Laconi. Number 55 gets fifth position. However, this is still a battle for seventh and eighth position. Position. It is going to be Ralph Vorman who heads off Jurgen van der Gerber. Junior, in the meantime, has come across in sixth position. Vorman, an injured rider, gets seventh. Van der Gerber, eighth place. The firecrackers have gone off. The triples and the twins, they, the, the battle was there. Although Gibbonau retired with a lap to go, it was a tremendous race. And that is a good race, not only for Duan because he needed a win, but Biaggi needed to get, get back on the podium because of a, of a none too great a Donington Park race two weekends ago. Doohan wins by 2.8 seconds ahead of Biaggi. Well, Randy Mamola, somehow I think this victory by Mick Doohan did not surprise you. I think this morning you said that Mick was going to be able to do it here on this racetrack because he was able to do 28, 27 so easily in practice. He looked just more, more concerned everybody had all weekend long you know he, he made a statement that he didn't like coming here to this particular racetrack there's always racetracks that people don't like but we have to race every single one of them and he did a fantastic job and he can do whatever he wanted to much like what Simon did uh, two weeks ago in the British Grand Prix Mick had, Mick had full control of this race
25 points. That gives Mick Stewart his fourth win in 1998. Well, he's never even finished third so far this year. He, when he does finish a race, he finishes first or second. The only two non-finishes, of course, mechanical failure in Japan, no points. And Madrid nerfed off the track for lap one. Well, we've got nine races in, and Mick Dewan now leads the championship by 12 points. It took him a long time to get into the lead. It wasn't until Donington that he actually got in front. That was only by seven points coming into this race. Max Biaggi, uh, Ralph Wallman pretty pleased with that result. And, of course, he's riding from the pain in that injured wrist. So Mick Dewan leads by 12 points. Alex Crivier is a further six points back um, from Max Biaggi. This is how close it was for the last podium step between Alex Crivier and Alex Barosk, who gave it a huge handful and slight wheelie over the line. The difference was just 0.15. Well, the Medina's best ever finish there for Kenny Roberts Jr. And, of course, backing him up, just behind him, was Ralph Vaughlman. Retirees from the race, we saw Arbe fall. We saw another Yamaha of Simon Crafar fall. Scott Smart got within five laps of the end and, unfortunately, didn't finish. Likewise, Sete Gibbonau went pop. I saw Gary McCoy having trouble. He finished out of the point 17th position, some sort of a problem. Well, Crivier, that's almost like Mugello. You get some points, but you're 11.4 seconds back to this guy here. Doohan is totally in control of the race and the championship. Fine. Yesterday, I was consistent anyway. Um, I had a few uh, few moments throughout the weekend, one crash um, and ran off the track a couple of times. But other than that, uh, it wasn't too bad. Um, we were consistent. I felt uh, if I could get a good start, I had a good chance. I knew Max would be tough. Um, and uh, thankfully, I think Barros, Barros come by. I had troubles with my bike at the beginning. The front suspension wasn't working too good with a lot of fuel. Once the fuel laid lighten up, I could start to get into a bit of a rhythm. And uh, when I got back by uh, Barros, then I think Max got caught behind, but I still started to edge away from Max. And uh, at the end there, he was matching my times and he brought, brought it back a little bit. But, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to keep it at three seconds. and. And we did that in the last lap, we was just bring it home. <laughs> Thank you, congratulations. So Mick Dewan wins his 50th Grand Prix in the 500 class and his 50th victory, all of his victories, all of his starts, 130 of them have been in 500, coincides with the 100th win, not by a rider, but by this machine, the NSR V4 Honda, which has now won 100 500 Grand Prix. Second position today, uh, Max Biaggi. Second position, I don't know if it's, it makes you happy or not, but it was difficult to follow first Barros, to, to pass Barros and then to follow Mick. Like I said, this track is very difficult to overtake, and um, unfortunately, I, I have no brilliant start. And then uh, with the new tires, you know, Barros, Crawford, they try very hard, but you know, soon the, the, the tires let go, they come in slow, 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 so, so they are in, in, the, in the way of the fastest rider. Anyway, I try my best, and uh, I have very good pace. I, uh, at the beginning, I was, I was fast, I was on control, and then uh, barrels came in, and they came also cry for it. They make me slow, and, you know, I run a few tired, and Mick takes a few seconds advantage. At the end, I will try to reduce the gap, but it was too late. And uh, we'll see next race, you know. I do my best, I'm happy with what I've done. I've done the best I could. Unfortunately, we found Barros and Crawford in the middle, I primi giri quando le gomme sono nuove vanno molto forte, poi dopo cinque giri si dovrebbero fermare a cambiare la gomma per essere costanti su, que su quella velocità e purtroppo me lo sono trovato in mezzo, mi ha rallentato, questo mi ha dato molto fastidio perché mica ha preso un vantaggio e qui non ce l'ho fatta più a recuperare. Peccato perché potevo fare una gran gara e sicuramente potevo lottare per vincere. Grazie, thank you. Well, it was uh, fun and games out there. Look how close Max Biaggi got to us on our onboard camera that we are running on board with Alex Barros through turn one. Crafar then came through. This was in the first part of the race, or about lap six, I believe it was, through that turn one. Crafar then came through up into third. And finally, Alex Pellier, third position today. And I think that third position was the best you could get with the bad start you had. Yes, I'm, I'm very happy because uh, the last two races uh, was not so good for me <clears throat> and now to, to win the podium is a good result for me. For sure that 
uh, uh, I will try to to go better, no? but uh, right now <coughs> one podium it's, it's very good for me, good result. Bueno, estoy contento porque después de las dos últimas carreras parecía que no iba muy bien y ahora pues estoy cogiendo otra vez el el hilo de la moto y espero pues bueno las, después de este break que hay de un mes uh, las próximas carreras pues volver a coger la motivación y a ver si acertamos con la puesta a punto y estamos luchando para ganar. Alex Trivier, muy aware that if he's going to get back into this championship hunt, he's going to have to do better than finish third in these races. He won two, but he's really been off the pace for the last four races. Well, that's the summer term done. We now go into the autumn term because it's a while now before the next Grand Prix, but the coverage is still going to be red hot at the Bruno circuit. Two years ago, Alex Crivier won the race two thousandths of a second ahead of Michael Doohan. Last year, we saw Valentino Rossi winning his 125cc title. We've had a good day for Britain here today. I won't tell you exactly what happened, but we've had a belter because some of you might have just turned the TV on. We're just, I'm not going to say it again after either watch the highlights or rewind your video it's worth watching guys there's confirmation of your 500 cc summer break championship table 12 points back to max biaggi in second place alex crivier six back checker no participation for him here crafar fell out of the race barros got some points aoki got some points as well arbe fell out of the race off his yamaha as well so Mick Dewan at midpoint through the season, well, we're in the second half already, has extended that lead to 12 points. And uh, as you look farther down here, you see John Kaczynski. We're hoping to see him back at the Czech Republic. He was up into fourth place in the championship at one point, but he's now back into 10th. He hasn't scored since, of course, he crashed <clears throat> in France. Was knocked off in Harama, then crashed again in France and decided not to participate in that race. Went back to the States. Assen, not France. Yeah. Okay, what a day. What a day indeed. There's confirmation of the result. Doohan, just under three seconds ahead of Biaggi. Crivier, 11.3 back, but he's losing a third of a second a lap. And, well, he says he's very happy, but he's going to say that, isn't he, for third position. But 11.3 back is a long, long way. I think Max Biaggi's had a good day, don't you think, Dennis? 2.8 back of Doohan. I think uh, that's, um, as I would call it in my phrase, is maximum damage limitation. With Ab regards to the points. Absolutely. He kept the pressure on Mick. Mick acknowledged that, but there was no way he was going to catch Doohan today. Well, when we come back for the Czech Republic, we're hoping to see not just John Kaczynski, but also Taddy Okada, and I hear Yukio Kagayama will also be back on the Suzuki. So the summer break will give an opportunity for the 500 riders who are uh, recovering from injuries to get back into shape and will be at full strength again. Of course, Carlos Checa won't be there, but he will be later in the year, we hope, in Imola. And, of course, the good news here was that Czech is recovering. Okay, then Repsol, Honda, well, Honda win all but one Grand Prix so far this year. That means they've won eight out of nine when Crayfar won Donington Park. So Crayfar's won a Grand Prix this year. Checker has won one, and Max Biaggi has won one as well. So Doohan has won four now, and Alex Crivier has won two. But it's the biggest, prettiest silver platter for Michael Doohan. That'll be a big trophy cabinet. It must be huge by now for the four-time world champion. 12-point lead now going into the summer break and uh, Jerry Burgess on the left hand side collects the team award for Repsol Honda of course based in Alst just on the outskirts of Brussels in Belgium
the stars of the Australian flag are the highest ones of all above the podium. What a day we've had, Dennis. It's a four weekends that we've got clear, but of course a lot of riders going to Suzuka, eight-hour race next weekend. And what are the Catalans going to be preparing for us when we get back at Bruno? Well, they're going to be putting the pressure on Alex Crivier, but I think the main thing we've got to say this first half of the season is that this guy in second place, Max Biaggi, who began so strong, he's still there. He hasn't gone away. His threat has turned into a real one. He was the only guy today who really seemed to be able to put any pressure on Mick, but Mick was too much for everyone here. Right then, that's it from Randy Mamola down in pit lane here from Germany. Dennis Noyes alongside me and myself, Toby Moody. We're all signing off. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.